Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2, is the virus responsible for the current COVID-19 outbreak, declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization on 11th of March 2020. First detected in Wuhan, China in late 2019, its genomic sequence was successfully submitted to the online resource GenBank on January 5, 2020, arming pharma and biotech companies with the data needed to race towards a new vaccine. So how does a vaccine work? At its simplest, a vaccine works by infecting an individual with a dead or weakened form of the virus or bacteria, allowing the body to use its own immune response to provide a defence. The concept is attributed to Edward Jenner in 1796. He took the pus from a milkmaid stricken with the milder disease of cowpox and used it to infect a young boy who, as a result, became immune to the related but deadlier disease of smallpox. Jenna took the Latin word for cow, vacca, and cowpox, vaccinia, to name his discovery, vaccination. Vaccines became a powerful tool in preventing certain diseases like smallpox. During the so-called Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, which killed at least 50 million people at the end of the First World War, physicians tried everything they knew to treat it, even the ancient art of bleeding. The only thing that seemed to work was infusing the blood of a recovered patient into one stricken with the disease. This showed that a vaccine may hold the answer, but identifying the virus or bacteria culprit without modern-day powerful microscopes was a near-impossible task. The virus they sought was influenza, named in 15th century Italy after an epidemic supposedly influenced by the stars. There are four types of the virus, A, B, C and D. The 1917-18 flu was type A, highly infectious and responsible for modern-day seasonal flu. Its structure consists of two surface proteins called antigens, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. Both have multiple variants, 18 in the case of hemagglutinin, which helps the virus to attach to cells, and 8 of neuraminidase, which helps the virus to penetrate human cells. These variants are used to identify different influenza types. For example, the 1917-18 flu was influenza A, H1N1. This is the same virus, albeit a new strain that was also responsible for the so-called swine flu pandemic of 2009. But it wasn't until English scientists isolated the virus in the nose of a patient infected with influenza A in 1933 and then learnt that it could be propagated in hen's eggs in 1935, that a possible vaccine could be tested, leading to the first influenza vaccine approved in 1945. So how do we make a vaccine now? Well, we still use eggs. The virus is injected inside the egg and allowed to propagate. It's then extracted and washed with detergent, exposing the genetic material to inactivate it. The hemagglutinin and neuraminidase are purified and then syringed into your body. The vaccine does no harm, but triggers an immune response, producing antibodies that bind to the hemagglutinin. This is called the lock and key method, where the antibody is unique to the specific virus. The body now has the ability to detect that virus in the future and produce antibodies immediately. These bind to the hemagglutinin, preventing the virus from forming a bond with human cells and causing the person to get sick. So can we use the same principles to generate a coronavirus vaccine? Possibly. The coronavirus family is separate from influenza, but shares common traits. On the outside is a glycoprotein spike. This crown-like structure is where the virus gets its name. Similar to hemagglutinin in influenza, this spike protein mediates entry of coronavirus into human cells. This is the lock to which the antibody key will bind. Teams from around the world are racing to find ways of targeting the spike protein for both drug discovery and novel vaccines. This process has been dramatically sped up thanks to computer modelling based on the successful genetic sequencing of SARS-CoV-2 and its submission to the GenBank. Currently, an effective treatment is harking back to the desperate actions of 1918. Trials are showing that seriously ill patients seem to be seeing benefits following an injection of blood serum from patients who have recovered from COVID-19. 
Regulatory bodies all over the world are also allowing human vaccine trials far earlier than normal, but it will still take time to ensure the safe rollout of any mass vaccination campaign. The earliest we could see a vaccine is still more than a year away, maybe as long as 18 months. Therefore, while we wait for a vaccine or other cure, following the advice to isolate and observe social distancing measures is still the best defence against the virus.